So here an experimental approach was used. Um, the tenth field would be the cost-benefit analysis. So this was able to do a cost-benefit analysis. The results were that it cost uh, $667 per beneficiary to run this project. Um, and then finally, you get uh, in the last field sources of information. So you get a number of different links to how this um, how this information was sourced. Um, so you can click on either of those links to go and find more detailed information and studies on this project. One thing which is which is missing here would be a direct link to the, the completed impact evaluation report. Um, we've neglected not to put on the links for the impact evaluations directly onto this the inventory because the links are constantly changing um, and you often have um, several iterations of an impact evaluation report which are produced. Um, so if you do want to see um, the completed impact evaluation report, please get in touch with us um, or in touch with the managers of the inventory or even just do an, an online search to see if you can find uh, the report online. Uh, Susanna, did you want to come in and, and talk any more about the inventory? Okay, we continue on then. So that's one way that we're using, um, that we're disseminating information on the, the impact evaluations which are going on, or the evaluation studies which are going on in youth employment. Um, this is not an initiative that we do alone but something that we partner on with um, the, the ILO, the International Labour Organization, um, with the IDB, the World Bank, the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation. So there's a number of different partners which are involved in uploading and constantly um, improving the information which is on the inventory. The second pop my screen up big again here. Uh, the second tool which we're using to disseminate information is the Yen Marketplace. Um, this is a very new uh, initiative by Yen, something which has only been online and operational for the past couple of weeks. So I, I won't give you a, a demo of how it works at this point. Um, what w what's interesting, I think, for this web webinar is uh, the, the working group section. So we've set up a working group on evaluation where we are sharing a number of different resources on impact evaluation. Um, so I would encourage um, the members of this uh, or the, the people watching this webinar to, to sign up for the marketplace and, and look what's going on. Um, in addition to, to the evaluation work, um, the, I think the, the very interesting um, part of this is the, the trading center and on the trading center you have access to a number of different funding, training, um, coaching, expertise, uh, materials and opportunities um, which is constantly being updated um, and whose target is basically youth organizations and, and young entrepreneurs. So I would encourage to take a look at, at and, and sign up for what's going on on the marketplace. Um, we don't have that much time left. I think we want to leave uh, 15 minutes for questions. So um, maybe I just go into a final slide, um, which is yeah, we've, we've talked now about how to do an evaluation and how evidence is being spread, but we've talked very little about what evidence has been collected and what lessons have been learned so far. So maybe I'll just touch briefly on what we here at Yen have learned so far through evaluations in, in youth employment. Um, so I actually ha wanted to talk about three areas and what evidence has been collected in these three different areas, but I'll, I'll only talk about one, um, which is on entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is a, youth entrepreneurship is an area that um, is, is gaining increasing importance um, and increasing acceptance 
of a way to provide jobs and improved um, improved income situations for young people. Um, but there's very, very little evidence out there about um, if it's working or not. And, and we really like to improve the evidence around entrepreneurship schemes. Nevertheless, um, we have learned a few things about entrepreneurship schemes and I've tried to, to summarize what we have learned in, in this slide. Um, and this is really at the program level. So I've provided a few very key design features or design factors um, which, which we've seen um, successful entrepreneurship um, schemes have used in the past and, and, and have provided positive employment and income outcomes. So the first is that uh, entrepreneurship schemes should be demand driven. Um, so it's crucial that the, uh, the entrepreneurship schemes are providing skills, experience, knowledge, um, which, which is directly applicable to the labor market or to the business environment. So there's a very, there has to be a very close linkage um, in the entrepreneurship scheme with uh, the labor market and the business market. Um, targeting and screening um, is extremely important. Um, and by this uh, we mean when, by this we're talking about the selection of beneficiaries. So um, NGOs, programs on youth employment should be putting a lot of time and resources at the selection phase um, and at the targeting phase of their projects and make sure that beneficiaries are selected according to criteria that the program has set up um, and that the, 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 the curriculum or the program is appropriately designed to achieve the needs and the, the profiles of those beneficiaries that are being, being selected. Um, this often involves rigorous screening mechanisms um, and this can, can often reduce, uh, reduce dropout rates, rates um, which can be common in these, these, these programs and can ensure a, a commitment from the participants and an ability to respond to, to their requirements. Um, um, this is kind of self-explanatory. Private sectors and NGOs need to participate in the design and the delivery of entrepreneurship schemes. So this goes back to the demand-driven part. Um, the private sector should be closely consulted when designing your entrepreneurship scheme and even involved in um, the delivery of it. Um, and there's, there's many different ways you can provide linkages to the private sector. Classroom Plus, um, so this is really talking about setting up con con um, comprehensive entrepreneurship schemes. So oftentimes um, just the training or the classroom part of entrepreneurship schemes is not enough, but there really needs to be a lot of um, mentorship, accompaniment, um, follow-up um, lessons or follow-up perhaps microfinance schemes. Um, to add a little bit more to that uh, context, to that classroom training. So it's really about providing a full A to Z service to the entrepreneurs. Um, it's not just coming in at one, um, at one part of the program and providing that, but providing more of a comprehensive service. Uh, access to finance, I just addressed that. We found through the evidence that providing some assistance post-intervention or post-programs as far as um, microloans, access to finance, work with microfinance institution can go a long way in giving entrepreneurs a head start on, on the labor markets or in the, in the business sector. And then thirdly is um, providing support services for the participants. So this I'm talking really about not only providing Maybe, um, maybe training services, but also providing support to allow, um, to allow participants to participate in those programs. So doing things like stipends, um, reimbursement of travel, um, vouchers, um, financial assistance to the, to the participants over the, the duration of the program. Um, this, this evidence about providing support services for, for participants 
comes from um, a number of different impact evaluations which were done in North America, in Canada and the US, but also in Latin America in uh, impact evaluations that were going on down there. Um, and providing support services had a very high correlation to the success of the project. So that's the, the sixth and the final key design fig factor that we've learned through impact evaluation. Um, time is running out, so I'm going to skip this last slide um, and go, go directly to the last slide, which is um, just some further information about Yen and how you can keep in, in contact with us. Um, there, we can also provide personal email addresses at the end, but there's um, the, the general email address for, for the Youth Employment Network um, at ILO.org. And I think that should be it from me. Um, Susanna, do you want to take back over the mic and, and get some questions? Thank you, Drew. Um, there are three questions that, um, that have been raised. Uh, one question was raised, in fact, before the webinar. It was sent by uh, through the marketplace. So um, it refers basically to the, the evaluation font and the selection criteria uh, for, the, for those resources. So uh, maybe, Drew, we, you can start with, with explaining a little bit um, or, or reiterating a, bit, a little bit on that. And then we can jump to two more questions we have from Sean Kennedy and Sarah Bell. So, um, uh, Drew, just uh, shortly, and, and I'll come back to the other questions. Um, yeah, this is the, now we're in the second year of, of the evaluation fund. The first year, last year, um, it was 2010, 2011. Um, the, we worked in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, so yeah, the basic criteria there was to be operating a youth employment project in Sub-Saharan Africa. In the second year, which is we're now in 2011-2012, we we changed the region to the Middle East and North Africa. So we're working, as I was saying, with 11 organizations in the Middle East and, and North Africa. We, each year we do a request for applications um, and we do a competitive selection of the uh, organizations or projects which will, be, uh, which will receive the assistance from us. Um, we, we're not positive yet whether we're going to do another request for applications this year um, or in 2013. We're still kind of discussing with our, our stakeholders um, what will be the approach. Um, but, but the selection criteria that we've used in the past is, is, quite, is quite simple. Um, you need to be um, a youth employment organization and you, it can be from, from government, from, from civil society, from multilateral institutions or from the private sector. Um, which, which is working, uh, which is a youth service organization, so you should be working with youth. Um, and you should have a commitment to three different things. So the first one, obviously, is um, monitoring the evaluation and a commitment to, to improve and get better on, on what you're already doing in the area. The second is a commitment to expanding what you're doing, so um, reaching some type of scale with your with your services, which you're um, which you're implementing. Um, and the third is basically uh, your experience on monitoring the evaluation. So we want to work with organizations which um, already have some experience on MNE and which are already doing some some work in that area. Um, so yeah, the criteria is quite basic. Um, and when we do do another request for applications, the materials will be available um, quite openly. Okay, thank you, Drew. Uh, so this question was posed by um, uh, Oshani Watoyin from Nigeria. The organization is Nature Cares. And now we can jump to Sean Kennedy. Uh, so his question uh, is um, about the um, 
how to, I mean, I, I will just go and read his question. Uh, it's, um, 